probably is recording now with me saying this kind of stuff. Okay, I think it is actually recording. Okay, so we're uh, we're excited to have uh, Christian Zicker here from uh, University of Maryland, College Park, and he's going to tell us all about coordinates for representations of three manifold groups. All right, so thank you very much for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to talk. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about um, coordinates for um, representation varieties. So I'll start by letting um, M be a compact free manifold. Manifold with boundary. And I'll look at a group G, which in this talk it will pretty much always just be SL2C or maybe PSL2C. But some of what I'm saying can also be viewed for any algebraic group, algebraic Lie group. Yeah, simple. Yeah, a lot simple too. But like in this talk, um, it's, I'm just going to consider SL2C. So, um, so I don't <coughs> care about the explicit conditions you have to put on to make it work. So, um, but a lot of the stuff generalizes. Okay, so um, so we're interested in the set of representations. So consider the following set: the set of homomorphisms from the fundamental group into into G. So this has, in a very natural way, the structure of a variety. This is a variety. And it's very easy to get explicit coordinates for it. Um, so if you have a presentation <coughs> of the group, so G, if G is SL2C, that's just given by polynomial equations. So you just have to set, um, give a matrix for each generator, and then set up the appropriate relations. There will be polynomial equation, so it's easy to see. But typically, so one is uh, interested in uh, this set here, um, modulo conjugation. So that's typically um, a very ugly space. It's not a variety. If you just take the, the set theoretic quotient, that does not have a variety structure. It's typically, in general, not Hausdorff. So the way to make it a variety is by considering the character variety. So this is one approach which I'm not going to talk about today, <coughs> um, but this is the more standard approach: is to consider the character variety. So this is um, typically denoted X. So if this is a variety, call it R for representations. Then this is spec of ORG, uh, where OR is a um, <coughs> coordinate ring, and uh, ORG is like ring of invariance. Is this readable? Uh, yeah, I think the size is the markers a little bit faded. Uh, maybe I'll try a new one. Okay. <coughs> So uh, yeah, so instead, so uh, we'll consider a new approach, so um, alternative approach. is to instead consider what's called decorated representations. So I'm going to define this, uh, <laughs> this, this, this notion here. And uh, the idea is that this should give another way of, of producing a variety where you don't consider just representation, but you consider representations together with a little bit of extra structure. And so they've been around um, <coughs> uh, for a while in, in, in various uh, guises. Um, for example, Thurston's gluing equations, if you're familiar with those, they really give you not just representations, but actually decorated representations. And also, there's like Penner's decorated Teichmuller space, which don't just give you representations of a surface, but representations together with like choices of, of horospheres. So that's 
an example, and also the higher fucking Godshoff stuff and higher Teichmuller spaces, they actually give you decorated representations. And also in, <coughs> in work in mathematical physics, it also show up. So, so let me define uh, what I mean by, by decorated representations. So definition. Um, so we consider a representation. So now I want to do PSL2C. I'll talk a little bit about um, <coughs> how to do other, other groups. <coughs> um, so then a decoration of rho. So this is a, is a rho equivariant assignment. of a uh, coset. So I'll just introduce some, uh, some notation. So I'll let um, b be equal to this group, and n be equal to oh, If you want a general uh, <coughs> algebraic group, you need to fix the Borel subgroup and the unipotent subgroup. Um, but I'm just going to do n equals 2 here, of a B coset um, to each um, um, to each boundary component of the universal cover of M. So i.e. it's a map, a row equivariant map from ideal points of M tilde to um, here is PSL2C modulo B. So these are just the ideal points. Ideal points is just bounded components, the so points at infinity. OK. So, <coughs> so as I mentioned, these have, uh, have popped up in various uh, in, uh, in, in, in various guises. So, um, so before I, I give you some more viewpoints on what this is, so to try to give you an idea of, of what, what sort of object this is, let me just say, so just like we have conjugation acting on representations, it also acts on decorated representation. So if, let's call that D. So, no, so um, conjugation. So if uh, D is a decoration of rho, deco, then GD is a decoration of um, <coughs> of G rho G inverse. So so there are different viewpoints. Um, is this visible over here? <laughs> it is? OK, all right. Um, <clears throat> so viewpoints. So there's, um, you can think about it geometrically, so hyperbolic geometry. So PSL2C, we can exploit that this is the isometry, uh, orientation preserving isometry group of I have all the free space. So you have a, a fixed flag, I guess, over each, over each boundary yeah. component? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like, but it's the same flag for both, like, constant on the whole component, if you will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for each boundary component, you have fixed the flag. So, um, but if you look at just for n equals 2, then, um, <clears throat> then you can think of this as having chosen, so then a coset here. Um, PSL2C modulo B. These are in one to one correspondence with points on the boundary of hyperbolic free space just by taking a coset to um, G infinity. Okay? So one can view this as a sort of decoration of rho. A rho, this is then equal to. 
a choice of um, <coughs> choice of fixed point fixed point of um, <coughs> of rho of pi one of di of m. So for each boundary component. Um, So you can if you think about it a little bit, so so this is a row equivariant map, so it really only uh, you really need only to make one point, one choice of coset per per boundary. And since it's row equivariant, it has to be stabilized. So it will just be a choice of of points that's stabilized by this group. But that can be so in general for generic uh, representation, generically there will be two choices of stabilizers. But sometimes there will be only one, and sometimes there will be infinitely many if the group is trivial. <coughs> but that's what, uh, what the decoration is. And I should also say here that if, uh, if all components, so note, so if all boundary components are spheres and or tori, and the, main in the most interesting case is that they are tori, uh, then all, every representation has a decoration. So we just assume that for now. Okay, so there's another view which is via bundles. Yeah? Sure. Yeah. Uh, the, like when you go to other lead groups, the, is, I mean, the Borel in this case is sort of natural because you're just in two by two matrices. Yeah. But like with other lead groups, do you get anything by varying the parabolic? And I can look at like an assignment of different types of more generalized five varieties. So again, they all no. It's always this. Uh, Borel. It's always this Bor Bor Borel. I don't know what's going to happen if you pick a different parabolic group. Uh, I've never thought of that, oh, I mean, but but you you pick the Borel here. At least that's the only one that I've ever thought about. What happens uh, is you get a projective variety, well, a quasi-projective variety. Um, of, well, there's a graded ring here, so there's a quasi-projective variety of these structures, and it's going to cover all of the further Borels by choosing bigger parabolics. Ah, okay. So the choice of in your coordinate ring, presumably, you're going to get a grading by dominant weights. Yeah. Um, and uh, choosing a bigger parabolic corresponds to choosing gradings that only lie in a facet of the file chamber. Ah, uh, all right. The lower okay. faces. So, for instance, if you had PSL N C, yeah. and you wanted to only have uh, uh, decorations coming from the Grassmannian of D planes, that would correspond to a particular cone, uh, actually ray, oh, okay. in the vial chamber. Um, those would be the only places your gradings along that that edge hmm. would be allowed to lie. Okay. So it's like taking prod of a subalgebra of the algebra that, that presumably you'll get as coordinates on these things. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. It's like taking Maybe. a course code. I've only thought about the uh, the Borel subgroup ever. So I think the Borel gives you everything more. <laughs> yeah. Like any any, uh, any yeah. algebraic fact you prove that's sort of grading <laughs> stable on the Borel case will pass immediately to the pair ball case. All right. <laughs> okay. So so in terms of flat bundles, so uh, um, a representation up to conjugation, so rho. Um, gives rise to a flat G bundle. And then we can say a decoration of rho. This is a choice of choice of reduction of E's restriction to the boundary to a B bundle. So there's a sort of different, different, uh, different ways of 
of thinking about this, this, this notion. So, but typically, if one does not care about decorations, but one only cares about representations, so let me just tell you what, what, um, what extra stuff you get. All right, so decorated representations versus representations. So we have this map here. This is the forgetful map. <coughs> so this is subjective under this assumption. And it's uh, generically, it's uh, 2 to the k to 1, where k is equal to the number of, um, <coughs> uh, number of boundary components. So is pi hat 5 versus it at all? Um, it does not in general have finite fiber. It has generically has finite fibers. It has infinite fibers. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But, 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 OK, so that doesn't mean like. Yeah. So we will also be doing decorated representations, uh, modular conjugation. And that's the one that we will give a structure of a variety. So I don't really know this forgetful map how you can. Oh, you haven't quotient it. You haven't quotient it, yeah. Oh, sorry. I see you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, but the quotient it will still be true. But then this stuff will not be a variety. So I don't think it's, it's, it makes, it's not clear what's meant by the question. Is it a towel or what? I don't know. Maybe it well, is. You but you further quotient to the GIT quotient from the. Ah, quotient. from the. And yeah, and then maybe, maybe I don't, I, I, I don't know, but yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, but it, it, this is only generically, um, and you can see it from the from the hyperbolic geometry perspective that generically, um, <coughs> generically, the the image of the boundary component will be diagonalizable, and so there will be exactly two choices, like. Um, that fixes because the diagonal element has to fixes two points, so that will be two generically. But sometimes they're infinitely many, and sometimes they're only one. So it's one to one if all rho of um, <coughs> rho of pi one of d i m are unipotent and non-trivial. <coughs> and it's infinite to one if if one of the um, is uh, trivial. So it's almost the same. So it's some sort of a, like you're blowing up over the, over the ones that uh, uh, the representation that collapses a boundary component. Otherwise, you're taking some sort of covering, or sometimes you have only. So, But this is the, the sort of idea. To have in mind is that this should have like a structure of a variety. Um, <clears throat> and but before I go into that, I'm just going to give you. I'm going to talk about how to get coordinates on this thing. So so the idea is that if you take decorated representations and just take the set theoretic quotient by conjugation, um, then you should sort of get a variety. And it's not entirely true what I'm saying, but that's the sort of philosophy. Um, <clears throat> but it's almost true, and you should get coordinates from the from the triangulation. So let me talk about how coordinates give give you, or how triangulations give you in a natural way coordinates on this thing. Um, <clears throat> so for the other Lie groups, which I'm not going to talk much about today, maybe a little bit if there's time in the end. That theory is very much inspired by the work of fucking Gontroff. Um, <coughs> but for the n equals two cases, um, <coughs> yeah, not so much. Okay, so coordinates from triangulations.
Any more questions? Sorry. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. About related stuff, though. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so let um, so let tau be an ideal triangulation. Of M, so that just means that the, the ideal points are vertices. So the boundary com each boundary component is a, is a vertex. So then, <coughs> so then I claim. So I'm just going to. Okay. So then, uh, a decoration or a decorated representation. Oh, um, <coughs> gives rise to um, the signs the coset uh, to each each vertex of each simplex. Of, uh, of the triangulation. So that's, let me just draw a little picture. So it's easier to draw it in 2D. So if you're manifold, so this is a 2D manifold. Maybe it's just this one. And so you can think of, so think about it in terms of algebraic geometry, but this is a purely combinatorial thing. So it, you should not necessarily think about it in, in that picture, it's just like good for um, <coughs> for intuition. So if you have a coset here B, then you should have A B and here B B, or row of A, row of B, and row of A. Well, A and B are just like the, the two generators of the fundamental group, and this is row of A B B, and I go of course then this goes over here and and so on. And if you pick a triangulation here, then to each simplex you get cosets. So here you have O of B, B, O of A, B, B, O of A, B. And you have the other simplex here, B, and row of B. And if you pick, the, pick this like being, uh, being shifted somewhere else, it was, all these cosets would just, just differ by some, <coughs> some scaling by some element in G. So the cosets. Are determined. So here, G0, G, B, G1, B. In 3D, there are three of them, there are four of them are determined up to multiplication by an element in G. Okay? Does that make sense? So if you have a decoration, you in a very natural way have assignments of cosets to each simplex to the corners of the simplex. So you can you have such a situation here. Okay? So this gives you so so this this uh, so tuples of such cosets have been have been studied by uh, uh, by Falk and Goldschroff and they have given explicit uh, or ways of getting uh, Getting coordinates, <coughs> so uh, so that's why a lot of this is, is very much inspired by that. Um, <coughs> so yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. So in that sense, is, I mean, they don't give coordinates; they give rational functions. Uh, so yeah, it's it's not exactly the same as what they're doing, but it's very uh, very closely related. So we are getting explicit uh, explicit coordinates for. And for um, <coughs> for the groups SLN and PGLN, um, but the, some of some a lot of the stuff also generalizes to other groups. And I've been working a lot about. Uh, I've, I'm hoping to get it for other groups soon, but I don't know. <laughs> um, <coughs> but right now the situation is like for SLN and for so they only work uh, king. Uh, their stuff is mainly for surfaces, so they're interested in, in higher Teichmuller uh, theory. But this sort of stuff with uh, with uh, with um, with coordinates for cosets, that 
works for other tuples as well. And so they give very explicit coordinates for uh, N cosets. And for B cosets, they only do it for surfaces. But we've figured out how to work that out for free manifolds as well. So, um <coughs> And for other, other groups, Fock and Gonshaw only give you, they only show that you have positive tri transformations when you change the triangulation. They don't actually give, co give the coordinates. Yes. But I think that I'm very close to having that. But uh, at least for, <laughs> for some simple. <clears throat> All right. Um, okay. So let's 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 move on. Um, okay. So this suggests a sort of strategy for 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 finding uh, decorated representations. So strategy for uh, parameterizing decorated reps. So one is uh, so local. One is local. So parameterized tuples. And the other one is global. It's to give some uh, the conditions for gluing up. All right. Um, <laughs> any any questions? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we were just talking about and trying to relate this to some stuff that we've thought about. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, if, if you look at like the dual graph of these sort of this triangulation in three D, it seems like you get some sort of directed graph, like that looks like a quiver, and uh -huh. you can associate like quivers to things like representation varieties. Like, yeah, I I I. Uh, like setting though. Yeah, so Fogg and Gonshaw, they give, give they they give the quiver specifically for the for the an and uh, okay. and and they show that if you can perform quiver mutations to get from so they're looking at surfaces and they they're studying this question that if you have this triangulation where you have cosets here here and the, and you have coordinates here then they 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 show what to do if if you go from this to this it's what they call a flip. And the coordinates they transform by quiver mutations, but I don't think that's related to the quiver that you obtain by uh, taking the um, taking the, the the dual graph of triangulation. I, I don't think that's related, but um, maybe. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. Uh, it is? Uh, oh, maybe. OK, so you OK, maybe. <laughs> Let's <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right, so yeah. Um, hmm. OK, so there is a notion of, so these coordinates that Fagan Gonshov are giving, so they are um, <clears throat> in order to recover representations from them, there's some non-degeneracy conditions that need to be satisfied. So for n equals 2, these conditions are very simple. So uh, I'm going to give you a definition, <coughs> uh, a decoration is generic if for each simplex the B cosets are distinct. So this is only for n equals two, but for other groups you can also give a notion of that. But for n equals two, it's 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 just very very simple. And there's a very <laughs> there's a very important point that this depends on the triangulation.
So If you have a, a triangulation like this, then maybe these are all distinct, and these are all distinct. But if you change the triangulation a little bit, oops, then, then the, these are no longer distinct. So the notion of being generic depends on the triangulation. But so we have very, very good, co uh, good coordinates for generic decorations. But the problem is that this notion depends on the triangulation. So we can get a nice variety, but if the variety depends on the triangulation, then you are in sort of bad shape because you might miss several components. And there are really examples where this happens, where you miss components on the, uh, of, of representations entirely if you start with, uh, with, 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 a, with, a uh, with a given triangulation. And it's not clear that, that there exists a triangulation that get, gets all. Or you can get them, like theoretically, if you allow spherical components, you can show that you can find all by a barycentric subdivision or something like that. But in general, but this will produce too many simplices and make like, like concrete computations impossible. But so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, this problem. Um, <clears throat> we've recently solved this this problem, but let's just um, let's just uh, discuss this issue here first where we discuss only generic decoration. So the fact that this is a variety is essentially already due to Thurston. Thurston's gluing equation variety is a variety of decorated PSL2C representations. So let me state this as a theorem due to Thurston. So theorem due to Thurston. So he didn't formulate it like this, but uh, you can say that the set of decorated PSL2C um, representations, modulo conjugation. This is a variety. A uh, gener uh, generic, generically, is a variety. And you get coordinates from, uh, but of course, this depends on you need to have a, you need, this notion depends on the triangulation. This is a variety. So uh, let me just prove this, uh, just sketch this. So we need to first parameterize, give coordinates for tuples. But if it's just PSL2C, then it's very easy. So, um, <clears throat> so recall PSL2C modulo B. This is the boundary of, and these are distinct if these points are distinct, of course. And four distinct points in the boundary are determined by that cross ratio. So this is some number z. And then you assign, <coughs> so this is the, the local. It's an affine variety, yeah. It's not quasi-projective? The generic ones? So I'm only looking at generic ones here. That has the structure of an affine variety. It does? Yeah. Okay. So so let let C E for an edge E be equal to B C. C prime is equal to 1 over 1 minus C. Or C double prime equals 1 minus 1 over C. So then the global picture, which some of you may have seen before, it's a first and gluing equation, first and proof that if you just take, so for each one cell, one cell E, you just take the product of all the edges in that one cell and set that equal to one. So just to recap, to each simplex, you have a coordinate, the shape, the cross ratio, and for each one cell, you just take the product of the, para of the, uh, the parameters 
and set that equal to 1. So that's clearly a variety. And that variety is, uh, parameterizes these decorated PSL2C representation. You can recover the decoration and the representation like from the coordinates in a one-to-one -one fashion. <coughs> OK. So, <coughs> and this is the stuff that, um, that uh, based on, on uh, the work of Falk and Gontroff, um, a result with, uh, with, um, <coughs> with Gaur, uh, Matthias Gerner and Stavros Garofalidis, we generalize this to PGLNC. And another result by, uh, with, uh, with Dylan first, and also where we did this for, um, <coughs> for n cosets. But so I wanted to talk more about um, explicit computations. And so there's another type of coordinates than these that are, uh, that are somehow, for some reason, better suited for explicit computations. So these are called Ptolemy coordinates. The Ptolemy coordinates. How long time do I have? Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Then I'm not gonna. <laughs> gonna get very far. Okay. Well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. No problem. Um, so, okay, um, yeah, so Ptolemy coordinates, so they are for, um, so for boundary, so if rho is, is boundary unipotent, so that just means that all the, all the peripheral subgroups um, are, like, unipotent, um, then uh, one can also consider, can consider, uh, decorations by by n cosets instead of b cosets. So in the Ptolemy coordinates, just like these shape coordinates here are coordinates, we can consider Ptolemy coordinates. Um, so let's do the local picture here. Um, <coughs> so here you have. D0 n, D1 n, D2 n, D3 n. So we want to parameterize such tuples up to the, up to the uh, simultaneous multiplication by an element in G. <coughs> and so let's just suppose that GI is equal to AI, BI, CI, DI. And of course, this is up to <coughs> n, so that whatever BI and DI are, it doesn't matter. It's only the first vector uh, that, that matters. So I can consider 0, 1, 2, 3, Cij. So this is the determinant of Ai, Bi, and Aj, Bj. And so this is C2, 3, and C02, C01, C13, and so on. And these satisfy some relations, namely Cij <coughs> to 1. Cij equals minus Cji. And 2, the Ptolemy relation. This is very important. These are relations? Yeah, these are Pluca relations. Exactly. If you put these together, like it will be, um, <coughs> so a, a tuple here, like that's a that's a vector. So you get a two by four matrix, and it's like the, the Pico relations for the Grassmannian two by four, or <coughs> whatever. <coughs> okay, um, and then it's a it's a very simple little exercise. It's a simple fact that any uh, so given. Cij satisfying 
uh, 1 and 2. They uniquely determine, or they uniquely determine the, well, what I want to say is, they uniquely recover the term in cosets G0n. Oh, OK. It's because I'm out of time, so I need to. So this, this is because SLN, SL2 modulo n is C2. So you have C2 cross C2 cross C2 cross C2. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, in, so this case, in this case, it's very, very simple. Okay. It's a very simple exercise. There's, uh, there's no, uh, no problem there. Um, but it's a little harder for. Um, <laughs> a little is <laughs> well, given the work of Falk and Gontra of this, um, <clears throat> but of course uh, <laughs> that was pretty, uh, um, what's it called, groundbreaking. <clears throat> okay, so so what I wanted to say is there's a one-to-one -one correspondence, and we also have a notion of generic, and generic just means that these are distinct as p cosets, and that's. Of course, that is exactly the condition that these are non-trivial. And so this is what's the local thing in the global. The global is just that if you have two edges here, if you, for example, glue this thing together here, then the Ptolemy coordinates, if edges are identified, they just have to have the same Ptolemy coordinates. So this is a dense open subset of SL. SLM modulo, or SLM modulo n to the fourth mod mod SLM. Say again, so. <laughs> Your genericity assumption gives you a dense open subset of yes. the quotient yes. of the yes. fourth thing yes. modulo yes. thing. That's probably why it's better to get coordinates there, right? Because it's, it's a yeah. dense open subset where more is invertible. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but we can actually, so I also I wanted to say a little bit. I think I will not have time to say anything about. Uh, higher n, but we can talk about that, le that later on how this stuff Over works. Here. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> so if uh, epsilon i j k, so this is simplex k, and this is simplex k prime, is equal to epsilon. This is the edge. Then c i j k should be equal to c i prime j prime k prime. So locally. The, they just have to satisfy these relations. And globally, if edges are glued together, they have to have the same Ptolemy. So this is, this is manifestly a variety. So this is a variety. So the variety is called, is uh, denoted, well, that's what we denoted, P2 of tau, and called the Ptolemy variety. Why don't you go with the variety? Because that is taken. Oh. E yeah, maybe, maybe in, in hindsight that, uh, but I mean, I think this is Ptolemy. That's like very, very. Uh, <laughs> the Kluger is also invariant here. Ptolemy yeah. is geometry. <laughs> so this is, I think, better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course, if, if, you want, if, you want, if, you want, if you want, if you want to actually do this for higher dimensional manifolds, and uh, as far as I know, very little has been done about that. But uh, I would like to study this in more detail. Then you will need the higher Plugger. So then you will have like a four-term Plugger relation. <coughs> and in that situation, it might be more better to call them Plugger because they will not be a Ptolemy type. Um, but, uh, but yeah, they come up, come up. Because a lot of this stuff has nothing to do with, two, uh, with surfaces of free manifold. It just has to do with parameterizing tuples. And you can do arbitrary tuples and thereby get things for. Um, <coughs> OK, so this is called the Ptolemy variety. And the Ptolemy variety parameterizes, again, the um, generically decorated um, boundary unipotent yeah. representation. So this is theorem. So V2 of tau, 1 to 1, generically decorated um, um, boundary unipotent uh, SL2C. Reps modular conjugation set theoretic quotient. Okay, so yeah, I wanted to. Uh, I wrote in my uh, my abstract that I want to say a little bit about how to use these coordinates to compute invariants of representations such as volume and and turn Simons invariant. And all I want to say here, I don't have time, is just that there are explicit formulas that you can write down 
for the volume and turns Simons invariant. You can also write down an explicit formula for the trace field of a representation. Turns out that a trace field is just the field generated by these Ptolemy coordinates. Um, like n cycles or something. Say again? Cycles. I mean, uh, I mean, are these coordinates? Are you going to think of them as like functions on cocycles? Or yeah. So yeah, um, I'm not entirely sure what you mean, but but um, the way you recover the representation is via a cocycle. Okay. So you can write down explicitly um, a cocycle on your on your complex with explicit labelings by matrices from the coordinates, and thereby recover the representation. But you have explicit formulas for invariance, like volume and transignments, just from these coordinates without recovering what the representation is. So just knowing these coordinates, you can just write down what, what the volume and what the transignments is. And they have, the volume of the representation? Yeah. yeah. So the parameterized representation, and uh, the volume is independent on, of the decoration. So, so you can just. And uh, I also wanted to say a few words about like how uh, that this is actually very efficient. So. So let me just say a few words about that. And then, so explicit computations. So they're remarkably efficient. So the P2 of tau uh, has been computed. So you can use, just plug these into your favorite computer algebra pack, package. We use magma. And um, <clears throat> so um, I never actually wrote down my, uh, I mentioned them. Maybe I should wrote down, write down some of my co-authors. So joined with, uh, so some of it is joined with uh, Matthias Garner and Stavros Galofalidis, and some of it is joined with um, is joined with uh, Dylan Furston. Um, <clears throat> so that's been computed for all, oh, I should say, for all uh, hyperbolic manifolds with up to nine syntheses. So there are 61,000 something, yeah, right. roughly. <laughs> and for many, many, for thousands and thousands of not complements. Yeah. And I should say that if you want to try to do that um, using like the character variety, for example, you also have that the character variety, it, uh, you have explicit generators for the coordinate ring is generated by traces of uh, generators of the group and uh, pr traces of products and maybe traces of triples, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so then you have the. But if you want to try to do concrete computations with that, even for the boundary unipotent, you, you, you will not get that very far. But this is extremely, uh, extremely powerful. All manifolds up to nine simplices, and many of them with, like, uh, with up to like 15 or, or more simplices. You can, you can do the character variety with SL2. If you want to go to SL3, you're in some trouble. Yeah. Serious trouble. But SL2, yeah. there's actually a, 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 a really clean, uh, finite presentation for the ideal once you have a, a finite presentation for the fundamental group. OK. So and it's, uh, it's explicitly computable by yeah, Grobner basis. And no, no, so you, you actually get the components. You don't like even need a Grobner basis. Oh. You, you actually have a, a you, you, the free group has, like, it comes in like three, I think, different families of relations. And then when you want to add in relations coming from the fundamental group, you essentially just pair the free group relations with the other relations. And you use the, oh. the trace as like a filing your form and essentially you take the dot product of relations from the fundamental group with the free group relations and then right. there's a theorem that says that gives you everything. Okay. And so it's very clean and nice. Huh. Uh, it's not very well known, I think, okay. but it, that this exists. But okay. it's only for two by two. Uh -huh. Three by two, yeah. nothing like this is, is known. Yeah, for, for three by three we also have much more trouble, but we computed it only for, uh, for all manifolds with up to three simplices. So there are like, I think there are 21 or so. Um, and then we've computed for a lot of them with four simplices, but are still a few missing, and a bunch with five, but not very many. So it, it, it does become a lot harder for n equals three. But this is like really, really efficient. <coughs> um, and so what else did I want to say? Uh, I have how much do I have? 
Do I have? Sorry. Do we stop at uh, 3:30 or? Yeah, we should, we should okay. Okay. So I should also mention a new result that I have uh, with uh, so the theorem. So I'm just going to make a definition. So recall a decoration. Um, so decorations. This is a map from ideal points to uh, PSL2C here, or SL2C. <coughs> This is um, <clears throat> is totally degenerate. Oh, modulo b is totally degenerate if uh, the image consists of a single point. So, for example, if you take the the trivial representation and the trivial decoration of that, that just has. <coughs> Like the image is a single point, so we will rule that out, and you can prove that this this means that so so this implies that implies that rho is what's it called um, uh, reducible. So we prove that all it's not the only the uh, the other way is not true if you have that can be reducible <coughs> representations that have non that have non totally degenerate uh, decorations but it's true that the set of um, um, <coughs> um, non totally totally degenerate uh, decorated representations is a variety. <coughs> Modular conjugation is a variety. Honest conjugation, you're not doing GIT? Not GIT. Honest conjugation. You're only removing these that are very, very totally degenerate. So are those your unstable points in some actual GIT question? So that I don't know. Okay. But that might very well be. That would be very interesting, uh, but I don't know. Um, <coughs> Yeah, so this is a variety, and again, you get explicit coordinates by picking a triangulation. So triangulation, any triangulation provides coordinates. So it's, 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 it's an abstract variety, so it's something that's not affine, but it's covered by affines. Oh, okay. Well, I see. <coughs> is it projective, or do you know if it's projective? <coughs> uh, I don't know. Okay. Is it closed? Is it closed? Yeah. Like, are there, is there infinite directions? Uh, I don't know. I don't know much about it. I don't. I just know how. Um, oh, I should say. So this is Gorona and myself. And so we proved that we uh, that if you have uh, any triangulation, <coughs> we have proved an explicit way of writing down. Uh, affine patches that give you um, all the non totally degenerate decorated representation. Cool. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, thank our speaker. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, students who need signatures come to me, and after I sign your sheet, go erase part of the board. And then, uh, yeah, we'll take questions. We'll at, uh, at, uh, yeah, if there's questions, we'll take them at the floor. Here. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I didn't have time for everything I wanted to say.